Hey guys and welcome back. Today I want to share with you five tips on exploring a new location that will ensure that you are going to come away with fantastic shots. Now maybe this location somewhere you've never been to before. Or maybe it's a location that's a little obscure that really there's not a lot of information about it and maybe not really that many people ever go to this location. But for you, you'll have the tools to get there and come away with an amazing shot, even though it's your first time ever visiting there. And stick around because I'm gonna share with you also what to do if you get caught trespassing on private land while you're scouting locations. So stick around. So this past week was spring break for my kids. And my wife and I just bought a new camper back at the end of 2020 and we wanted to go on a camping trip and we really wanted to go somewhere we hadn't been before. So I started looking around and because of just all of the, the COVID uh, dynamic, something happened in this last year that has really increased the number of campers and RVs uh, that are on the road. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but trust me it's gone ballistic and i'm really good friends with a guy who owns eight rv dealerships rv station and uh canon has told me that he's never seen anything like it you just cannot hardly get a campsite anywhere because there's more campers on the road so we looked at broken bow of course that's where we want to go any possible chance of going out there but forget about it there was not even a cabin there was not even so much as a tent site nothing for spring break so i looked at a couple of the other state parks that i hadn't been to and i discovered lake wister now this is in eastern oklahoma just north of the talamina drive area you cross the ridge and there's sort of a valley and lake wister is situated right at the base of that valley just north of the ridge that talamina scenic byway runs along it's kind of a razorback ridge and that road runs from talahina to mena arkansas and it's a beautiful drive and Lake Wister was really close, and I was it kind of piqued my curiosity. So I want to kind of go through five things that I took away from this trip that I want to share with you that will help you kind of like it helped me. So number one, the first thing about going to a new location, just like Wister was for me, I'd never been there, didn't really know much about it. So what do you do? You go on your phone. There's plenty of apps, and I've talked about these in the past, but my first go-to is to go to Google Earth or Google Maps and just sort of pinch and zoom and look around the lake and get an idea of how the lake runs. Is it a north-south lake? Is it east-west? Where are the campsites located? Um, another app that I go to is All Trails to see if there's any neat scenic trails that will go around the lake. Um, I'll look for pictures that other travelers have posted. Um, if you just go to Google Maps and, ch and choose any state park, for the most part, you can go through where people have rated it and you can go into images and see pictures that other people have loaded up there. And they may not be the greatest photos in the world. They were probably shot with a phone. But don't underestimate these because these will give you a great glimpse into what the area truly has to offer. And if you see some images that people have posted that are just a beautiful scenic overlook or something like that, you can look at the visual cues that are in that shot, the clues, and see maybe where they were even standing when they took that picture. It's amazing how you can sort of dissect a picture and then put yourself back into that um, scene by doing a little bit of research and deductive reasoning. And so I did that for Lake Wister. And to my utter shock and surprise, there really just wasn't a lot of photos of this lake. It's just like a mystery. Why are there no photos of Lake Wister? And why are there no trails that go around the lake? But it really piqued my curiosity even more because I'm like, wow, this is a great opportunity to shoot something that a lot of people haven't shot. So I pretty much ran every single one of my apps into a dead end and just realized the best thing to do was just to get there and explore. So the first tip is to research ahead of time and use your apps to get all the information and give you a nice idea of what to expect. Tip number two is to just drive around and explore once you're there because even as great as the apps are, 
there's just nothing like being there, seeing it in three dimensions and sort of getting an idea of, oh, okay, I see this road gain some elevation. If you're looking at a satellite view, you can see the roads, but it's really hard to see where there's elevation gain or where it falls. It just looks like a flat earth. It doesn't really give you that much dimension. So as we drove into Lake Worcester, I started noticing that there were some really high outcrops and some overlooks and places where you could see down into the lake. And then once we got to our campsite, I could see a big ridge up behind the whole camp area with some rock cliffs and outcrops and things like that. So I started to really get a, a sense of the personality of Lake Worcester as soon as we got there. And then something I didn't expect is as we're hooking up our camper, back the truck in, I've got the jacks going down and I just sort of feel like the light is getting good off, you know, to my uh, west and you know Lake Worcester started giving me shots right away I mean I hadn't even parked the camper yet and I got this pretty cool shot and so then the next day I was really excited about exploring more so that takes me to uh, tip number three and that's to ask questions Sometimes there's gonna be campers that are around your location. I talked to a lady who said she saw a bald eagle at our campsite just a couple of days before that. So got some information there. Went to the park office and I started talking to the park rangers and started asking questions and told them, look, I'm a landscape photographer. I would love to come away with a beautiful shot of your lake and I would love if you could share it on Instagram or anything. And so, you know, by offering to share that with them, I was hoping that they would be a champion for me and start giving me information on where I can get the best shots, right? Well, they actually told me something disappointing. The ridge that I had seen from where we parked is exactly where I knew I could get a good shot of Lake Worcester. It was up, it was elevated, there was rocks. I knew I could get a clearing up there. And unfortunately, they said it was on private property. And that's why there was no trails, like on all trails, that's why there were no trails that went all the way around Lake Worcester, is because the lake property boundaries stopped just outside of the lake. So that ridge up there, it was on private land. So there was no public trails or anything that led up there. So I'm like, man, you know, how am I gonna get myself up there? Because there was just this, this gnawing need to get up on that ridge. And I saw it from day one and I just knew, I just had this calling that I wanted to be up there. So this morning I noticed a cliff right across from our campsite, way up there on that ridge. And those rocks that are way up there, that's my intended destination for the morning. And my thought is that from there, I'll have a really awesome vantage point over this lake and those distant hills over there it would give me a really interesting shot so the goal is to, in the morning i'm going to try to get up drive to a place and park over there at the foot of that hill and find a way up to the top before sunrise so we'll see if i can pull it off and by the way, I'm gonna to try to do a little gear upgrade. Um, I shot a lot of my behind the scenes this trip with just my phone. I'm gonna probably pick up a little DJI Pocket 2 or something that I can take with me so it's not so shaky and a little better audio and everything. So my apologies for this one being a little rough on the behind the scenes. But once I saw that spot, I just knew I had to get up there. So that brings me to tip number four, which is just to be persistent. So the next day, after knowing I want to get up on this ridge and after hitting a dead end with the park rangers and not finding anything on all trails, I just decided to drive around even more. So I found a road that led around the ridge and as I got to this abandoned strip mine, it was an old coal mine on the other side of that ridge, I noticed that the fence was down and I had a four wheel drive. So I just went location scouting on private property and uh, went up behind an old abandoned strip mine because my vantage point from Google Maps, Google Earth, I could see an old haul road around that strip mine that took me very close to the ridge where I want to get a shot of the lake. 
but I was up there exploring no longer than what 30 seconds 33.4 33.4 seconds before a truck came up and it was the owner of the land wanting to know what I was doing up there but he turned out to be super cool and Mr. Martin is now a friend and he's gonna allow us to come up there early in the morning or allow me to come up she's not gonna get up early I'm gonna get up early and he's gonna leave the gate dummy locked on the good road because we went four-wheeling to get up there straight up the hill uh, originally and he said you know come through the gate and I can come up and take a shot so I guess that just shows it's better to beg for forgiveness than try to get permission all of the time because there's no way I could have tracked him down or known which door to knock on so a bright red four-wheel drive climbing the hill in front of your house I guess that would kind of get attention right red flag <laughs> a red flag red truck red flag <laughs> yeah but it worked out and hopefully the sunshine works out tomorrow but Brett's cool <laughs> so after getting caught trespassing I came away with a sigh of relief first off but then this this newfound thrill of knowing that I was going to have an opportunity the next morning to get out and shoot an amazing sunrise so when it comes to that whole rule of, you know, it's better to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission, well, that kind of is true. But I would have to say that if you do get caught trespassing, this is a bonus tip. And that is just to apologize early and be completely transparent and tell them why you're there, what motivated you to trespass on their property, and to beg for forgiveness. <laughs> And as the saying goes, and then just ask politely, just would you mind if I come here? I, all I want is a photograph. And I'm sure once he saw that I was up on this ridge with my wife and kids, you know, he saw that we weren't, you know, up to no good. We were truly just looking for a photograph and he was cool. And most people will be pretty cool. I would say that night I got a little bonus shot it got really really windy like the previous day was so calm and so serene on lake wister this was unbelievable the wind from these storms in oklahoma were coming out of the west and this wind was hitting us right in the face as we were standing on the shore of the lake wister down from the campsite and i just got my 20 millimeter lens went back down there this time I took a tripod and I just saw how the water was coming over these rocks and it was just such a different scene. It looked more like the ocean than it did a lake. The lighting was just incredible. So I did a couple little shots there at the beach and got this shot, which was a drastically different shot than I had the previous night with the wind. And I really try to capture the motion as the water went over the rocks. It's like I would have one moment where the rock was completely covered with water and then a split second where the water was streaming over the edge like a little miniature waterfall. Then it would just be a rock with water around it. So there's that one little moment where you can get that motion. I think I dragged my shutter out to about uh, you know, a 15th of a second or something just to get a little bit of that motion blur of the water. And I took several shots. I would say if you're doing anything like this, it's just to keep shooting. Shoot, 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 shoot. And shoot all the way through that motion, through that action. Put your camera on continuous focus and high speed, continuous shooting so that you can get the, the multiple exposures you need to find that one little perfect moment, that happy place where the water is spilling over just right on those rocks. So the next morning, it was time. It was go time to get my Vista shot of Lake Wister. And here's kind of how that played out. Okay, it's 6.30 in the morning and I'm heading out to the ridge and I'm trying to drive slowly through this camp site as not to wake everyone up because most people are doing what sane people do and that's sleep in on a camping trip not get up at 5 30 and head out to a thicket to try to get a picture so when you're driving a big v8 you try to start the engine as quietly as possible and slip out without waking everyone and rattling all of those tin cans yeah that's what i've been trying to do this morning but i've got hopefully an open gate ahead after trespassing and getting permission uh, from the owner to come back this morning. <laughs> uh, 
Hopefully he left the gate open for me. This road hooks around the hill and enters uh, an old abandoned strip mine. I can only imagine the number of miles my dad must have driven on roads like this, working in the coal mines for over 40 years. Back and forth to work every day. So being out here on this abandoned strip mine kind of makes me think of him. And I'm sure he probably drove on roads like this in the dark most of the time. Obviously, it says no trespassing. <laughs> Guess I would have known better if I had come to this gate. Now, let's see. Did he leave it dummy locked? Yes. We are in. If I'm honest, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wandering the ruins looking for place to start if I'm honest I don't know who I am all I see is a man who's waiting for the wake up call so the owner of the property had warned me that the terrain was very rough and the brush was thick and he was not kidding it was absolutely just brutal going up that hill through the vines through the weeds through the thorn bushes and trying to do it all while you're packing heavy gear i had this new nodal ninja out loose i had a camera with a 200 to 500 zoom lens on it that i was trudging up the hill with and every single step was just work to get up that hill and it was a really long way from where I actually parked my truck over to where I actually ended up shooting shots. It took me the better part of an hour just to trudge through that thick brush to get there. I've gone about a quarter of a mile. I've made it up to the top of this ridge. Oh, it's been thick, thick brush. I'm on, I'm on a game trail and it faded several times into thickets. I often wonder how the deer can navigate and stay on a trail at dead ends. It's frustrating. But now I'm gonna explore this ridge just to see where the best clearing would be. There's a break on the clouds on the horizon. I don't know what kind of color again I keep peeking over the ridge and it's pretty awesome I just need to find my best clear I'm not really sure where that is but I may follow this ridge and just keep going until I have good light if I get any so once I made it up to the top then I was really struggling with finding a composition and lastly, this little bonus tip about finding locations is once you find a neat vantage point, don't just shoot. Keep moving around and trying different things. Use your phone as a preview. I scanned that, that scene doing panorama after panorama. I did this one when I first got to the top of the ridge. I thought it was decent, but it really just, uh, once I, I scanned the scene and saw this panorama it lacked any kind of foreground element um, and I ended up moving a little bit to the left of this ridge and I found this vantage point with which had the rock and everything in place but it was just really difficult because the rock was uneven uh, it was really really steep the the ridge was truly a razorback ridge. There was no outcrop of rock that stuck out that would give me a vantage point. I mean, I had to be right up on the tip of these rocks in order to get a shot. So it was kind of a challenging place, but I would say just keep shooting, keep moving, and keep lingering and seeing how your shot can develop and stay in it. Don't just take a few snapshots and leave, but really work the scene and search for different compositions and using your phone as a preview tool. Okay, I found this uh, other rock just on the other side. I was shooting back there. 
come on the other side of this tree and it gave me a little bit more of a clearing that shows the true personality of this ridge. This ridge runs linear alongside this lake and I'm gonna try to get a pano that really shows the personality of this ridge, this outcrop up here. Our camper where we're staying is right out on that peninsula down there. Actually, no, right down there, sorry. That little white speck is actually right there. That is my camper, right down there. So I saw this when we ate at our picnic table the other day, I actually saw this and wondered how I could get up here. And I think this may have been the clearing that I could see with all these rocks. So we're getting some color in the clouds now, lots of definition at least. Still may make for a pretty cool shot. And also check out the color to my northeast. I'm hoping those clouds keep tracking on. They're tracking to the southwest. I'm hoping that they will open up a little gap for some sun rays to come through. They are beginning to get thinner. So I'm hoping that maybe some sun rays might poke through and that would make a really cool effect. So let's hold out and see what we get. Okay, so to make use of the rule of thirds, I'm tilting the camera slightly down and I'm doing a series of two shot brackets. I don't really need a true three stop HDR bracket set here. I'm doing one that's slightly overexposed and one that's a little bit under to make sure I got, I got all the shadow detail and definition in those clouds. Still getting lots of color in the clouds even though the sun's been up a good while now. And I'm just gonna keep doing this pano. I love thumb shooting right when you're in an awkward position. In fact, I have to keep working my way around this rock to keep make sure I don't knock the rig off. Cause that's a long way down. Look at those treetops. I think I already shot that position. Oh man, the clouds are opening up behind me. I hope they keep tracking this way, give me some sun rays. I think I will linger for a bit today. Look what's happening. Those clouds are tracking southwest. And I think I found another final composition right here where I'm standing. If I can situate the tripod right here on this rock close to my feet. I almost wish that tree was back just a little bit further because I want down that ridge. But I want this rock in the foreground. So. I'm having to make a decision, my final composition. I think, you know, it's contrary to my typical thoughts about the lighting diminishing as the day wears on, but as these clouds move, the lighting is actually getting better and more dramatic. So I'm not giving up on this shot of Lake Wister. There is still some beauty to behold this morning. And let's see what God's got in store for us as these clouds keep tracking. I'm loving those shapes. If they keep coming, I may end up with something really special. So we'll uh, set up and see. It really was amazing to watch how the clouds moved across the scene and how the light continued to change. And it was just like God was saying, stay here a little bit longer. Ignore the fact that your wife is texting you or, you know, text her back and tell her you're okay, of course, but just stay here. Just linger a little bit longer. 
And sometimes that's all it takes to go from having kind of okay conditions to having amazing conditions is just to wait a little bit longer. It's, landscape photography is about patience. And as I watched the clouds go over, my composition really started to take shape. The ridge up on behind the lake didn't have that amazing sunrise view where you're looking right into the sun. Instead, the sun was kind of over my left shoulder. But because I kept working the scene, I found this nice little tree that just the beginning signs of spring emerging. It had these little tendrils of soft leaves starting to come out. And I knew that the light would filter through there when the sun finally broke through those clouds. And I thought that would give me enough interest and still give me that sort of sunrise feel. And I was able to get a position where it could sidelight the rock and maybe even cast some sun rays and things down into the lake down below me. So once I kind of found my composition, it was just a matter of a waiting game at that point. By the way, started the morning with a nice cut on the thumb. I was making my little morning cocktail of lemon juice and apple cider vinegar and salt and iodine, you know, my little keto cocktail. And I had one of those lemons that was like super hard and dry on the outside, like a rock, but I knew that it had juice on the inside. And I'm cutting away at this thing and it rolled and got me. Uh, the knife got me. So um, I'm scratched up. My legs are on fire from trudging through the briars. And ooh, I just, I just saw my first hint of sunlight on that ridge over there. Oh, right over there. And as these clouds track, that's gonna happen over here. Drama is about to unfold. Okay, what I'm gonna try to do is time it so that when that cloud that's moving this way reveals the sun, I'm gonna be shooting in that position. And when that first glint of sun comes out from behind the cloud, it's almost gonna, I'm gonna treat it as though it's the sun coming up over the mountains, like that's the moment of the sunrise. And so I'm gonna shoot a bunch of frames right here and then do my pano and come around this way. But I'm only gonna have a few moments to grab that initial moment when the sun comes out from behind this cloud. So I'm gonna set up and shoot and I can actually see the sun coming this way. I can see it scooting across that valley, so I gotta get ready. It's about to happen. So I got my shot, packed up my gear, and headed back down this treacherous hill. Well, I've made it back to the truck. I got hit in the eye with a limb as I was leaving the tripod. I was holding it, limb got behind it, come around and hit me, ah, oh, right across the eye. That was rough. You can see the scratches and rakes on the backpack. On the camera lens hood, that's now down a lens cap because a thorn bush thicket squeezed and popped that lens cap off as I trudged through. There's dirt on my brand new Noodle Ninja. Look at that. That was a rough hike. Oh, we'll see what happens when I edit these, but uh, I'm glad I went. It was a really rough hike. Um, don't know that I'd want to go back again in the dark especially, but I think I got some good shots. The question I'm left with was, all of this effort really worth it? Now, this shot that I got from the Vista point on Lake Wister is definitely not my best shot I've ever taken. I don't even think it's as great as the one that I got in January from a similar vantage point over Robber's Cave. Um, it was a challenging shoot, but I think the adventure was really what made it worth it for me. Um, sure, I love the shot, and I think it's probably one of Lake Wister that no other landscape photographer has ever shot before. That's what I love about places like Oklahoma. 
you know, some of the other states in the Pacific Northwest or out in the Southwest, they've had so much attention from landscape photographers. I would just encourage you, no matter where you are, to get out and explore maybe the lesser known places because it's up to us to sort of put those on the map. Oklahoma has not really been photographed by a lot of landscape photographers. So I see every single state park as a brand new golden opportunity to get out there and really put the shot in context for these parks. So I encourage you to explore the lesser uh, popular places, lesser known parks, and just see what God has out there. There's a lot of hidden treasures that you can find with your camera just by going through these five steps of exploring new locations that are unfamiliar. I hope you've gotten something out of this, and if you have, I please uh, ask you to share this channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you'll know when I go live with another one. And I'm gonna try to do more of the behind the scenes. I really wanna make this more of a vlog versus me just sitting here telling stories. But I really appreciate you joining me with this one. Hope you got something out of it. And hope you're encouraged to go out and shoot more photos on your own. God bless, and I'll see you next time.